I'm actually like really excited. Just what I don't even know why I'm really excited. I just feel a real excitement in the in the spirit realm. But we've been talking and we will be talking over the next few weeks about the kingdom of God. And I just love our God how he he just works. Like recently, as you know, Pastor Tom's been away for a couple of weeks. And while he was away, and I was just sort of praying as I'm reading, the word kept coming to me, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And then everything I read through um, the, you know, the gospels was like the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And and it was really stirring my heart. Often we preach different messages and yes, they always line up with the Word of God. But he talked about preaching about the kingdom of God. And so I've really been challenging my heart. We're like, what is the kingdom of God? And what is it that you want us to be encouraging the church? It doesn't actually preach about salvation as such. It's t- talking about the kingdom of God. And as I uh, tried to, uh, two very excited people in God, it's hard to talk on the phone because we both are talking at the same time. And, and I was saying to him, this is what God's been showing me. And he was like, wow, this is what I'm preaching, preaching about the kingdom. And do you realize? And so then we just set a task. Like, okay, we need to share more about the kingdom of God. And if our guys can put the uh, photo up, the first photo, um, because it's a clash of the kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And, and we have to be looking at what we're doing. And in a minute, we're going to look at a scripture in Colossians 1 verse 12. But we need to know the Bible says this. It talks so much about the kingdom. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is at hand. Um, the Bible says repent because of the kingdom of God. And so um, we're going to look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. It says this, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints in the light. And he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. And often we can read scripture and forget about really what it's actually saying there. It talked about there right at the beginning. He has qualified us um, to be partakers with the saints in the light. So my question is, if there are saints in the light, what does that tell us? That there are saints that are not in the light. When we're talking about the kingdom of God, it is possible to be a saint and not be in the kingdom of light. That's what the word of God tells us there. And it tells us that he has delivered us and he has conveyed us. If we can just bring back up that um, kingdom picture, if that's okay. Sorry, um, Ryan. He'll bring it back in a minute. But there's two kingdoms. And so what it's telling you there is that when salvation comes into your light, you come out of the kingdom of darkness and you get conveyed into the kingdom of light. You get conveyed into the kingdom of light. He's, he's transferred us to somewhere else. And I was thinking about, with especially with Pastor Tom being away, like a passport. You, you have a passport. Salvation is your passport to travel from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And so as we take a hold of God's word, we, we take that and we, we move over. But what I realized is for so many of us today, understanding about the two kingdoms that actually exist. And the problem is because we can't see in the spirit realm as such, we don't realize that there are two kingdoms, that we are constantly um, able to move in and out of in in that sense. And so we have a passport. And when you think about a passport, when you have a passport and you go on holiday, you take your passport, but that's exactly what it is. It's a holiday. And so when you go into another country, whatever it might be, you will notice straight away that things are very different. But what God wants us to do is to come into the kingdom and stay into the kingdom. And so I just want you to put up that other slide, guys. That's there. Now, this, I took this picture about, oh, I don't know, about six months ago. Every now and again, my grandsons come over to stay. And uh, they were coming overnight. And I, I heard Kai in his bedroom. And he's like, do, 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 do. And he's getting out his little teddies. And he's getting out his Bible. And, and he's unpacking his clothes. Do, 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 do. And then when he put a picture up of himself on the bed head, I just cracked up laughing. Now, I don't know if you've ever had a visitor come and stay, but I'll tell you, when they start putting their pictures up, you kind of think they're staying. And as he's do, 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 do. Have you ever had a visitor that's brought a picture of themselves? You get scared, okay? Because you start thinking, and I said to him, "How, how long are you staying, darling? Do, 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 do. And he was unpacking his toys. And, and straight away, the reason the Lord got me to is because that's how God wants us to be. He wants you when you come out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light that you planned on staying. 
that you are coming in and you are staying. I love my daughter. She's very much the same. When we've gone on holiday a few times together, for me, and I only noticed that she did it and I don't, I tend to leave everything still in my case because I have no intentions of staying. And she uses every drawer, doesn't she? Have you noticed that? She uses every drawer. She unpacks everything. I kind of figure if I put it in the drawers, I've got to take it all out. And if you hang it all up, you've got to take it all back out again. She uses all of it. Like she unpacks everything. And that's obviously where little Kyboy gets it from. And I was thinking, you know what? That's what God wants us to do. See, because when we go into other places, we don't need to worry about what's happening. We notice that the language is different. We notice that the culture is different. We notice so many things that are different. But the reason we don't learn about it is because we have no intentions of staying. And I wonder sometimes if that's us as Christians, when you come into the kingdom of light, when you come into God's kingdom, there's a different way of dressing, a different way of talking, a different way of living. But maybe you've just still got your pack, bag packed. Because when you need to, sometimes I just want to go back over here and stay in this kingdom. And, and, and yeah, it's a, it's a process. It's, God's not expecting when you get transferred into the kingdom of light that, boom, you suddenly become a totally different person. But what happens is change should come. Change should come. And I, I was thinking, I mean, I've been here for a long, long time now, but when I came from England and, you know, it seemed like every word they said was different. I mean, I thought you guys spoke... English here but we, we couldn't understand stuff and my mum used to get so frustrated and and you know you'd ask for something and they still you thought it was just if you came from Africa you know we'd ask like you know where do you buy the flannels and they're like huh what I'm like a flannel and they're like she means a shirt I'm like no like a flannel you wash your face with oh a face washer and I'm yeah. There were so many areas. And so what would happen though, if I stayed with that mentality of my English way of life, people say, why don't you go back home? Why don't you go back home? Because there should be something that starts to change in our life. I can't stand. We're, we're the same. When people come, I mean, I'd almost say I'm Australian now, but when we come into this country, you would say the same. Why don't they at least learn to speak our language? Why don't they learn our, our way of life? We, we complain so much about how people come into our country, which technically I now call Australia my country, and they don't change. You know what I mean? They've got their own little community. And we say, why, don't, why didn't they stay where they were? And God's saying the same. When he transfers us into the kingdom of light, as Christians, hopefully in the light, there should come some transformation in our life. There should come some changes in our life. Because one of the things that happen is, it's a new way of living. It's a new way of living. See, it's not about just asking salvation into my heart. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. Jesus, I'm now going to heaven. Because the Bible says that the kingdom of God is within you. And so we have to start to look at, you know, I challenge you, go home and start to read all the places in the New Testament where it talks about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God comes in us because we've asked Jesus into our heart. The same as recent, yesterday, I think it was, Australian citizens who you know, took on Australian citizenship became Australian. Now, they probably still don't talk like you Aussies and g'day, mate. I mean, they probably practice g'day, mate, g'day, mate. But there has to be more than that. There has to be a, a transferring in the kingdom of God. And I was thinking about it, like understanding when I'm talking about crossing over into that, that kingdom and, and the passport that you have, I want you to think about what it, what it cost him to, tra to transfer you. And it's not about by anything you did, praise God, it's about his grace. And, but when he, when he does that, you know, uh, a few years ago, Tom and I were in a hotel and it was actually a very nice hotel and he was off diving and they, they rang me and they said, oh, we would like you to try our sister hotel. And I didn't really, I don't move well, so I was like, oh, I kind of like here, but I'll ask him when he comes back. And so I told him, I, I think what it is, they've overbooked this hotel with other people, so they're just trying to transfer us over to this, to convey us over to this other hotel. So we said we'd go look, but we were sort of like, we're just going to then say, oh, no, thanks, but no thanks. And, uh, you know, the, for them, the big thing was this, what we're actually going to do, you can go to the executive thing, so there's free alcohol. And I was like, well, that's okay because we don't drink, so that is no benefit. And um, anyway, so they take us over and we're sort of like, we'll just have a look. And we walk into this 
I didn't even know hotels could be that. The room was so big. It's bigger than my house is now. It's like, it was massive. It had a powder room. I don't know what you do in a powder room, but there was a powder room and there was a, this, this place was so big. So we're like nudging each other to play it down. We're like, hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, we'd have to move our bags and it wasn't hard because I didn't unpack everything. So you only had to, we'd have to, you know, repack everything, which is really zip it up. And, and so slow, we're like, oh, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll take it. And as I'm like, yes, yes, can you believe this? It was just amazing. And that's what God does for us. See, he paid the price so you could be transferred into something so much better, into a new kingdom that looks amazing. And often we take salvation, church. Oh, we love, oh, yes, and now my sins are forgiven. And we come here and we go, whoa, this is amazing. But then we want to go back and live in the kingdom of darkness. And we need to start to look at what is in the kingdom of light and what is in the kingdom of darkness. And you need to think about what it cost him. Imagine if you gave up all of your life savings to bring someone over from a third world country who didn't seem to have much and then they spent their whole time going back there. How would you feel? But like that, that cost me so much. That cost me so much and you still choose to live where I tried to bring you out of. And God wants us to, to stand strong in that freedom. Galatians 5.1 says this, Galatians 5.1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not entangle again with the yoke of bondage. Galatians 5.1. He's telling you, stand fast in this freedom. And don't, it says, don't entangle yourself. That means you can be entangled. That's how come you can be a saint in the light, light or in the dark. Because you can get entangled with the bondage that comes from what he set you free from caught up in the, in the things of the world. I want to encourage you, see, holy, living holy, which is what he's called us to do, is not about perfection. Living holy is not about perfection. So I don't want this word to make me, oh, that's it, I'm just going to give up. It's not about perfection. It's about this. It's about walking in a lifestyle where you haven't planned to sin. Holy living is walking in a lifestyle where you haven't planned to sin. So you're like, I don't get that. If on your calendar or in your mind you have something booked that you know does not please your God, then that's not living holy. That's choosing to go back into the darkness. Look, at, if we just started to ask ourselves, are the things that I'm planning to do tomorrow? Do they glorify God? No, that does not include your job. I only see that God gets glorified in my job, but it's not unholy. Is the things that I'm doing, do they contradict what the Word of God says? That's when I know if I'm in the kingdom of light or if I'm in the kingdom of darkness. If the way that I'm living contradicts what He says, then I know that I'm not trying to live holy. See, often we say, I'm trying to, but trying to is, is a way of life. It's a, it's a changing it's lining our plans and our attitudes and our actions up with him. What does he say? Think about things like, how do I act? Do I act like someone laid their life down for me? Does my lifestyle show that? Do I, do I talk like someone who's laid their life down for me? Do I talk the same in church as out of church? Or am I, here I'm in the, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let's just pray. Father, I thank you. How do I talk outside? And no, no one else really knows that. You think, we think we know, but it's like, God, is what I'm saying, do I act like I'm in the kingdom of light? And is it possible, Lord, for me to dwell in both places? And what is the consequence of me doing those things? What's the company I keep? Your company will determine your attitude. How you live and how you talk, you, you become like those that you hang around. See, for most of you now, like Tom's not been here as, as long as me, but most of the time, you'd almost think he sounds almost Australian. But you wait, when he starts talking to his family on the phone, by the time he's talked for a while, I can't understand him myself. Because you become like those that you hang around. And we, we think we don't. We try and tell our kids that. You'll become like who you hang around. And God's going, you'll become like those who you hang around. 
I don't know how to get right with God. I don't know how. Look at who I'm hanging around. Look at who I'm hanging around. Choose to live in this place. In this place is so, so different. We need to understand that when we're, when we're pulled away by the, the things of the world and the snares of the world, this is what causes us. This is what we're talking about now, the conflict of the kingdom. The conflict of the kingdom. Colossians 2.6 says this. Colossians 2.6. As you have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. So walk in him. See, often we, you know, it, it, we can love script, you know, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus who live according to and walk in the Word of God, the things of God. See, we, we want to just pick things. Now, God's not a God. He's not going to pick someone who comes in and go, right, your life's not right. You need to. But he's just saying, you should be slowly unpacking a few more things in this kingdom. Put your photo up. Put your clothes in the drawer so that I at least know that you're staying for a while. Put away that little, today I'll be in this, today I'll go in that. Little travel case. Travelling where I want to go. The battle of two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And when we realise like your life, my life, will always be producing something. Always. Your life always produces. And so we need to start thinking, what am I, what am I producing out of my life? And, and often, you know, I was thinking like sometimes we're like, you know, God, my desire. We were singing before, this is my desire, Lord. We sing those, you know, this is, I'm not going to sing it for you. This is my desire, Lord, to honour you, to honour you. But my actions will show what my words are saying. Because most of us here today desire to lose weight, but we still keep eating cream cakes. I, I, I desire to not do this, but my actions aren't showing that I'm even trying. Now, the same, when you, you, you don't, like, if you haven't, like, lost 10 kilos in the first day, it's fine. But God's going, what's your desire? I desire to, to be fitter. I desire, you know, I, I've got a shirt because it was so funny. We were at my life group a few weeks ago, and uh, uh, we had some healthy food, which is unusual for our life group. And uh, Someone ha- was handing around the, I won't say who is, someone was handing around the um, healthy food and um, they were asked this person that who, and they were like, you don't want any, it's healthy. She said, do you think you get a body like this, living healthy? This takes a lot of work, you know. <laughs> I was like, I love it. We see, we need to get a little more honest than that. You know, oh, I wish I was more holy. Well, you don't get a body like that living over here, church. You want to be holy, you've got to get over here. You've got to start to read the Word of God and go, God, what are you saying? There were so many. I think over the next few weeks I'm going to share, and Pastor Tom will share more scriptures. Colossians 1. Colossians 1 verse 9 says this. Colossians 1 verse 9. For this reason we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you would be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. There has to come a a prayer, not only for others, but for ourselves. Just pray, Father God, I'm going to not cease praying until these people come into a place that they understand the knowledge and the spiritual understanding of your kingdom. What is your will? And also for my own life, Father God, I want to pray. Father God, I'm not going to keep, stop praying until I am filled with the knowledge of his will and, and spiritual understanding. Spirit, I want to I wanna understand this spirit realm, Father God. I'm wondering why I'm struggling, but it's actually because I'm floating between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. But I, I went to the prayer meeting, but I go to life group. But Lord, I want to dwell in your kingdom. It goes on to say in verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him and being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So he's telling us there we need to, to walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. See, when we're walking in the kingdom, the fruit will be evident. But we're in a, in a situation now, especially in our Western church, I don't even know why, we stop looking for fruit. We start listening to what people say. I'll listen to people say, oh no, she's a, she's a full-on Christian that I'm dating right now. I'm like, what church does she go to? Oh, well, she doesn't. And, and well, we are sleeping together. But, um, and, well, we were out raging, raging partying. Like, what, what bit of by their fruit? 
See, it doesn't say you'll know them by their prayer. It doesn't say you'll know them by their, their um, mouth. It doesn't say you'll know them by their post. Oh, wow, you, all these guys, are, oh, you can post as many Christian things as you like. God says, I'll know you by your fruit. Maybe some of you looking for partners need to know you don't find them by their posts. You don't find them. It doesn't say you'll find them by what they say, what they pray, or what they post. You'll know them by the fruit in their life. Ask yourself, is the person that I'm looking at, can I see they are in the kingdom of light? Then that's the person I want to be with. When I'm choosing my friends, can I say that, and, and don't come to me later and go, well, we're called to reach out. We are called to reach out. I'm not saying don't touch the, the non-churched, but I need to be drawn into the kingdom of God with the things that are fully pleasing him. By fully pleasing him. Colossians says this. That's why so many scriptures. Colossians 2 verse 6. At least a lot are in Colossians, guys. That'll help. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus, so walk in him. Walk in him. Understanding it's a, it's a constant battle to be walking in him. To, to know, God, what, what pleases you? What's on my calendar? What am I booking? What am I doing? Does it bring glory to you? And being honest with God to go, God, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not there yet. But I don't want to be living in this hotel thinking I'm living in this hotel and, and deceiving myself. Because sometimes that's what the enemy will do. Do you know he knows enough to know that you, he's not going to get you to go as a Christian and bow down and worship him? He's not that silly. Satan knows that's not going to work. So what he does for the Christians is he gets you just to bow down and worship yourself. Oh, how's that possible? Well, see, when we came into this kingdom, there was a king on the throne and he rules and reigns and he makes decisions. And so when I read the word of God and I know what he has told me to do and I go, yeah, but that one's too hard. So hop off and I'll just hop on for the self for me. But I'm still in the kingdom. I know if I'm in the kingdom, if I'm trying to, at the best of my knowledge, acknowledge what the king says and walk in what the king tells us to do. You know, I was sharing with someone now, like we, we say that we, we come under a, the rulership. This is the problem as um, Westerners. We find it really hard to come under authority. Anyone who's ever got a speeding fine and complained about it. I never hear anyone go, Father, I just thank you for giving me that. It just shows me that I have a submission of authority issue. We will sit and say, I mean, I can't believe it. I mean, it's a 60 zone. I mean, are you serious? And everyone else was doing 90. I was doing 70 and they ticketed me. Because I want to live in this kingdom and this kingdom. Rather than go, actually, no, the Lord tells me not to do that. And I choose not to listen. And the choosing of not listening to the authorities is, it costs you. And I was speaking to someone recently. They said, I'm no longer speeding. And I said, wow, that's awesome. Have you had a revelation? They said, no, just an issue with my bank account. See, because revelation will cause transformation. But a lot of times, we know, if, if you're driving and you see a right, you automatically slow down because you know you're not doing the right thing. We're the same at church. You're speeding in your lifestyle, things you do, but oh, we're here at church. Okay, do 60 here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And then you get out of here and drive totally different as if you're not a Christian. And then we come back into the kingdom. Oh, park car up. Come in. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, brother. The kingdom. I want you to understand there are two kingdoms. I love this scripture in John. I, I actually, I rang Tom recently and I was like, I don't, what is he saying here in John 11? John 11, 47 says this. John 11, it says, Then the priests, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What shall we do? For this man has worked many signs. If we let him alone like this, then everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. Now, it's a scripture I've known before. That, you know, the, the, they're saying like they're going to start to believe in Jesus. I, I kind of got that bit. But I said, I don't get why are they saying the Romans will come and take away our, both, our, both of our place and our nation. And then Pastor Tom was saying, well, what was happening was even though they were the priests, they kind of thought they were in charge, but the Romans still knew that they had authority over them. And so if Jesus came and started doing what he did, there would be a new king arise. And so these guys are going to come back and take their land. I don't know if this is too deep for you to comprehend what I realized. And I was like, that's how we live. 
See, because if we start living over here with a real king, the enemy's going to realize you, you had a revelation. You had a transformation. But while he can get you over here still being the high priest, still being the Christian, thinking that Jesus is the king, and they've still got authority over your life. See, complacency, these, pre- these, were the, these were the chief priests. These are supposed to be religious leaders who aren't really having a king, are doing things right in their own eyes. Pastor said that last week. When we say we want to we uh, wear our own apparel but have you as our king. And that's what these guys were doing. They were chief priests. They were Pharisees. They were supposedly the God-believing people. But at the end of the day, the Romans knew we're actually still in charge, but we're letting them think that they are. We're letting, and, and these guys are in here thinking, yeah, we're like God-believing people. But if someone who like really believes in God comes, like Jesus, the King of Kings, then they're going to come and take over. Powerful, powerful how we can relate that to our own lives and the things that we do. I'm going to give you a lot of scripture. Understanding that we, we are battling. We're going to go in a minute to Ephesians 5 verse 10 in a minute. But understanding that we have been transferred. We've come into a, a new country. I want to encourage you this year, if you want to see breakthrough, start to find out what it means to live in the kingdom. Find out what God's word says. If, he, if we are in his kingdom, then he is our king. And Father, I want to know what it is as the king you want to do. I want to know what you said. And Lord, help me for the things that I struggle with because there's so many things that you think are a good idea that sometimes I don't because I want, I want my desires and my things and, and I, I kind of want to wear my own clothes, but I want to call you king. I want to say that you rule and reign in my life. But there's too many things in the darkness. Remember I was saying the darkness entangles us, entangles us and stops us from doing what his word says. Find out what, you know, one of the things we need to understand as New, um, New Testament people is the Holy Spirit. I mean, we say we know these things, but the Holy Spirit lives inside me. So right now while we're here in church and we just have worship and everything else, it's awesome. But do you know the Bible says when I go and, and entangle myself in the things of the world, I take Christ with me. Maybe that's what you need to think next time when something in your life's not right. Maybe you're, whatever, sleeping with your boyfriend, your girlfriend or whatever. Take your photo or take Jesus' photo. Put it on the bedhead. Put that by the bedhead. Next time you're, you're gossiping, put a picture of Jesus up there. Father, we just thank you that you're here while we just whinge and carry on about everything. We just thank you you can be part of this as we celebrate your kingdom. Next time you're arguing with your wife or your husband, next time you're getting a little bit aggressive in your tone and using words that don't glorify God, get a picture of Jesus. Thank you. You could be here while I abuse my wife. And uh, I thank you, Jesus, that at the end I'll just say, I'm sorry, I never meant to say that. Thank you, Father, that you're just always with me. I've got to make you laugh to think about it. What about the next time you're going out clubbing or you're drinking, you're smoking, you're doing whatever? Father, I thank you that you could come with us today, celebrate, celebrate. Where's he going next? On the bar. Pop him on the bar. Even that, your challenge is, would you? No, because you don't actually want anyone to know. Really, I'm actually in the kingdom of light, but every now and again I pop over to here. You see those ones where people put pictures down of something where you don't want anyone to know? That's how we are, church. That's how we are. Next time you're arguing with your mum and dad and saying things you shouldn't say. Father, right now I just want to put that picture up and just want to honour you while I disrespect my parents, disobey my parents. When you're making that phone call telling mum, sorry, I'm stuck at my friend's because he needs help, but really it's because you've got a hangover and you don't want to come home. I thank you, Jesus, you'll just be here while I lie to my mum and dad. Come on, I could keep going. I could keep going. Thank you for that intercessory prayer meeting while we just expose all the things we know about everybody else. If you're too scared to put Jesus' picture up, put ours up for a while. Take me with you. Take Pastor Tom with you. Oh, because you like to put that. I love parents. When they're having issues with their kids, they put my photo up. Do you know what? We're going to tell Pastor Jane. What would Pastor Jane think of you right now? Hmm? Hmm? What would Pastor Tom say? Would you like us to ring Pastor Tom or Jane? 
And God's going, I'm already here. And I'm with you. And maybe you should try putting the photo up in your own life instead of just at your kids. Ouch. Ouch. Let me show you why. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 10 says this. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Poor church. When was the last time we asked God that? Finding out what's acceptable for you. Before I make my plans this week, before I open my mouth, before I start this conversation, Father God, whatever's acceptable to you. My wife's frustrating me right now. I've had a hard day at work. My, my husband's bugging me. And I like that scripture in, in uh, where was that? Ecclesiastes 4.2, Father. Really better than the one in 4.12. It's, it suits my lifestyle in the kingdom of darkness. Find out what's acceptable in the Lord, your king. What's acceptable to him? And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Do you know, as I, I wrote that, I, I was thinking there's so many now like, oh, good, that means I can actually dob on her and her and her and her and her. And the Lord said, expose them in your own life. Start with your own life first. Because often we want to expose the stuff in everyone else's life, the unfruitful works, the darkness. And God's going, let's just start at home. Let's just start at home. Ask God, finding out what is acceptable to you, Lord, and I'll have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather, Father, expose them in me. Yeah, it's a process. It, it, it's a process, church. I'm not expecting you, you know, to be there. I, I am so blessed even today that there's a, a couple of ladies who my heart is so knitted to who, you know, have had struggles and are drifting. And, you know, you know who you are. I just want to honour you for being here uh, today because it's hard to step back into church when you've been away. But I want to honour you, ladies, that, you, you know, you're, you're still there. And I want you to know that this is your church and you are, you are well loved and, and it's a process, but others of us that have been here week after week after week, we need to say, God, you know, is the things I'm doing acceptable? And Father, what isn't? Help me. Help me, God, to get it right. Help me. And it's, it's a work involved in us. Ephesians, last scripture I'm going to share with you. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, verse 22. Ephesians 4, 22. You know, because sometimes our, our God is so awesome. Our God is so great. But often we're, we're praying prayers. Father, if you don't want that guy in my life, just take him away, Father God. Lord, if you, if you don't want me to use that language, then just take away this anger, Father God. And the, the best place to grow is in the Word of God. It says that you put off, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to its deceitful lust. We all walk around with an old man. Some of you women are like, yeah, amen, and we're supposed to be praying for 30 days for them. <laughs> we all walk around with our old man, our old nature. And sometimes, church, you can pray all you like, Jesus, if you don't like this. You know, I had some stuff in my life years ago, and I knew God didn't like it. And I was praying, God, if you don't like this, then just take it away. And God said, no, you, you need to do that. Well, I just know. That's like, you know, Lord, if you don't want me to rob the bank, do God's going, you know what's right and wrong. That you put off concerning the former conduct. If you have former conduct that lines up with anything, can we have that, that oh no, because you've got that up, leave that up, too many things up. Sorry, guys. It's like ADD happening all over the place there. Okay. Put off the, the kingdom. Remember I said there's a battle between the kingdom. There's a, there's a conflict. Is the things that I'm battling within the kingdom of darkness? or the kingdom of light, that I would put off those things. And, you know, I could list, you already know them. We know them because when you come into the kingdom of light, you, you know in your heart what's right and wrong. They're the things that you don't get up here and give testimony from. I just want to tell you how, like, drunk I was last night, and I just want to tell you how we were gossiping about the pastors yesterday. It was just an amazing time of fellowship with me, and who else was there? And it was like, oh, no, it wasn't there. We know. We know what's on this side. We know when we're in that place. Put off the desires. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. We've got to renew that. We've got to renew that. That's about the growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Son of God. It's a, it's a process. It's a process. The longer you, Pastor Tom knows a couple of Ingl, uh, Indian words now because he's been over here a little bit longer. 
And the longer you dwell in the things of the kingdom, the more you'll learn about how the kingdom rules and reigns and what it's supposed to be like. And you put on, it goes on to say, the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. See, God's going, you can do it. See, because when he took us out of the kingdom of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of light, he brought us over here going, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. It isn't just about your salvation. Otherwise, the kingdom of God wouldn't be here. It says the kingdom of God is within us. So he showed us what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you out of darkness, out of bondage, out of all of those things, and I'm going to transfer you into the kingdom of light. That's not just a salvation message. That's a lifestyle message. So that now that I'm over here, to the best of my ability, I'm going to try and live in your kingdom. And to do that, you have to be king of my life and you have to show me, Lord, what pleases you, what's acceptable to you. And those things that I'm struggling with, I'm aware that there can be struggles. Then God, help me. Help me to reach out to someone to say, look, I, I have a real problem with this. Accountability is a, is a great thing. Recently, Pastor Tom was sharing something with me that he wanted to do. And I said, well, what we could do, you could become accountable with that. And he was like, not that thing. No, because, um, yeah, I don't. And, and we're, we're like that. Ask someone. Ask someone. With so many things, even in your, your lifestyle, go home and say to your, your husband or your wife, how much do you see I'm in this kingdom and how much? For you guys, maybe that is not quite that honest. Ask your friends. Because people are watching us. And when God transfers us and the cost that he paid on the Christ, he wants people that are willing to walk in his kingdom.